He consistently ranks in the Forbes list of the world's wealthiest people. He's one of the best known entrepreneurs of the personal computer revolution. He is the second most generous philanthropist in America, having given over $28 billion to charity. He's Bill Gates, and here are his top 10 rules for success. When I started Microsoft, I didn't think of it as all that risky. I mean, I was so excited about what we were doing. It's true I could have gone bankrupt, uh, but you know, I had a set of skills that were highly employable. And in fact, my parents were still willing to let me go back to Harvard and finish my education if I wanted to. You've always got a job with me, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the only, the thing that was scary to me wasn't quitting and starting the company. It was when I started hiring my friends and they expected to be paid. Uh, <laughs> and, and then we had customers who went bankrupt, customers that I'd counted on to come through. And so then I, I got this incredibly conservative approach that I wanted to have enough money in the bank to pay a year's worth of payroll, uh, even if we didn't get any, any payments coming in. And you know, I'm almost uh, <laughs> true to that the whole time. We have about 10 billion now, which is, is pretty much enough yeah. for the next year. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway. You know, I, if you're going to start a company, it takes so much energy that you know you it better overcome your your feeling of risk. I don't think that you necessarily, if you're going to start a company, should do it at the start of your career. I think there's a lot to be said for working for a company, learning how they do things. You know, if you're young, it's hard to go lease premises. They they made that hard for me. You couldn't rent a car uh, when you were. Uh, uh, under 25 at the time, so I was always taking taxis to go see customers. Uh, <laughs> and uh, the people would, you know, people would say, well, we're going to go have a discussion in the bar. Well, I couldn't go to the bar. Uh, <laughs> and, but, you know, that's fun because I'll tell you, when people are first skeptical and they go, this kid doesn't know anything, then when you show them you've really got a good product and you know something, they actually tend to go overboard and they think, whoa, you know, they know a lot. Uh, let's really do an incredible amount with these people. So our youth, at least in this country, uh, was a, a huge asset for us once we reached a, a certain threshold. It is hard, it's hard to hire old, older people um, because they'll be a little bit conservative about whether they should come and, and take the risk. And, it took three or four years before we could go out into the normal sort of employment pool. But those, those problems that come with starting a firm, you better think of those as, as part of the, the pleasure, part of the, the, the challenge that, that is part of the, the excitement. I want to thank Harvard for this honor. I'll be changing my job next year, and it will be nice to finally have a college degree on my resume. <laughs> I applaud the graduates for taking a much more direct route to your degrees. For my, my part, I'm just happy that the Crimson called me Harvard's most successful dropout. <laughs> I guess that makes me valedictorian of my own special class. I did the best of everyone who failed. <laughs> but I also want to be recognized as the guy who got Steve Ballmer to drop out of business school. <laughs> I'm a bad influence. That's why I was invited to speak at your graduation. If I'd spoken at your orientation, fewer of you might be here today. I'm in meetings a lot. My calendar gets very full with those. And then at night, after the kids have gone to bed, I'm on email a great deal. I get, get messages during the day. That's my chance to give long responses. And then over the weekend, I, I uh, send a lot of mail as well, as well. I take two weeks a year to just go off and read and think, where I'm not interrupted by work or anything else. I'm just uh, solidly trying to think about the future and people get to send me things to read as part of that so-called uh, Think Week. So it's a nice mix of things. About 25% of the time that I'm out uh, traveling around, meeting with customers, Europe, uh, Asia. And that sort of helps me think, OK, do we have the right priorities? What, what are people responding well to, and what would they 
They like to see us do better. Hello, I'm Bill Gates, Chairman of Microsoft. In this video, you're going to see the future, Windows. Microsoft first came up with the Windows concept back in 1983. And today, the leading software users have switched into the Windows environment. It's really incredible how quickly our powerful applications like Word and Excel and PowerPoint have been adopted. It's not just Microsoft applications. Even companies like WordPerfect and Lotus have now come out with Windows applications. And every week, we see new innovative work. It's really attracting all the innovation in the industry. We predicted this a long time ago, and now it, it's the future. The key point there is you've got to enjoy what you do every day. And for me, that's working with very smart people. It's working on new problems. You know, every time we think, hey, we've had a little bit of success, we're pretty careful not to dwell <laughs> on it too much because the bar gets raised. I love Bridge. Uh, Bridge helps you think. It's a game you can play your entire life and keep getting better and better. Uh, I think anybody who's good at bridge is going to be great at a lot of things. Uh, so I you know, really encourage people to get involved, and I want to thank the people who've put things together for juniors. Uh, they'll be thanking you the rest of their life because bridge is such a great sport. I talked to my dad. I talked to Warren. Uh, I talked to my wife Melinda. Uh, so I, I have enough people that know me and actually know where my uh, judgment. It isn't its strongest, where I might get overexcited about something or you know, forget to think about something. And so they're good at correcting, particularly Melinda, good at correcting uh, whatever uh, those blind spots are. And, and I think it's good to encourage sure. your friends and advisors uh, to really give them that license. You know, I, I can go to a party and forget to say hello to various people or something. That's a very minor example of my blind spots. Not but. to the hostess. <laughs> well, Melinda would help me do yeah, that. She would, so, yeah. Uh, so, you know, a, a small number of people that you can turn to on, on certain key things is a, a great, great asset. My best business decisions really have to do with uh, picking people. You know, deciding to go into partnership with Paul Allen. Uh, is, is probably at the top of the list. And then uh, subsequently uh, hiring a friend, Steve Ballmer. And having somebody who you totally trust, who's totally committed, who shares your vision, and yet he has a, a little bit different set of skills, and also acts as a check on you. You know, some of the ideas you come up with, you run by them because you know they're going to say, hey, wait a minute. Uh, uh, you know, have you thought about this and that? And just you know, the, the benefit of sparking off of somebody who's, who's got that kind of brilliance, it's not only made it fun, but it's really led to a lot of success. So picking, picking a partner is, is crucial. I had one habit that uh, I developed when I, when I was uh, at college that was actually a very bad habit, which was I like to show people that I didn't do any work. Uh, and that I didn't go to classes and I didn't care. And then at the very last minute, uh, like two days before the test, I'd, I'd get serious about it. And, and people, people thought that was funny. Uh, you know, that was my positioning, the guy who did nothing <laughs> until the last minute. Then when I went into business, that was a really bad habit. Uh, <laughs> and it took me a couple of years to get over that. Nobody praised me because I, I would do things at the last minute and, and I tried to reverse. Uh, to students, I'd actually... Uh, I didn't think that highly of who were always organized and had things done on time. I'm, I'm still working on it, but uh, uh, procrastination is not a good, good habit. Bill can change clothes in the car. So I'm going to challenge Bill Gates, my partner in Facebook, Sheryl Sandberg, and Netflix's founder and CEO, Reed Hastings. Well, I'm glad to give to ALS. It's a great cause, but I, I want to accept this challenge. I want to do it better. And it's been done. Been working on this, you know, got this design. There we go. Yeah. It's going to be great. I'm here 
to join the people bringing attention to Lou Gehrig's disease by taking the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. I'm going to challenge three more people, Elon Musk, Ryan Seacrest, and Chris Anderson of TED. Consider yourself challenged. You have 24 hours. Good luck. Is it true that you can leap over a chair from a standing position? It depends on the size of the chair. Uh, I'll cheat a little bit. <laughs> yes! I believe in uh, winners and losers, and, and especially the freedom to fail. Who? Who? Him? Who? Him? Who? Him? Him? him, him who? Me? What? Thank you so much for watching. I made this video because a bunch of you guys were asking me to. So if there's a famous entrepreneur that you want me to profile next, leave in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. I'm also curious to know what you think of Bill Gates as an entrepreneur and which of the 10 rules most resonates with you. Leave it below in the comments and I'm gonna join in the discussion. Thank you so much for watching. Continue to believe and I'll see you soon.